Okay, so I've just actually made the next uh, few lectures uh, and I realised that I didn't actually motivate them very well. So the point of this video is just to motivate the next few lectures in a, in a certain way. So the idea is something which crops up over and over again in mathematics. Uh, this phenomenon which I'll, I'll just try and describe. So you, you're often looking at some sort of object and to the object you associate a category. I'll just call it about. So let's give you some examples. So suppose you're a representation theorist, then X might be a group, or it might be an algebra, uh, or a ring, or something. Um, and what do you associate to it? What category is the standard sort of thing you associate it? You associate it to representation category or a category of modules, which right, A modules or, or Rep G, depending how you want to write this. Um, so that's one thing you might associate to a group. Um, if you were not doing representation theory, but maybe algebraic topology, the kind of axes that you deal with are spaces. So this would be a topological space, and you would associate to space the vector bundles. So you would take the vector bundles over here. If you're doing K-theory or something like that, that's a good thing to do. If you're an algebraic geometer, well, what are algebraic geometers like? Well, they like things like varieties. And associated to varieties, very useful category associated to a variety is the, uh, the category of sheaves um, or the category, or derived category of uh, sheaves, maybe. So, selection of those things you do there. If you're doing uh, logic, you might um, possibly be interested in sort of a set, well, let's just say a set of terms, and you associate to that the, uh, the subsets of X. So this is, this is subsets of X, which is sort of the predicates. So that probably deserves an explanation. So maybe this is the uh, set of people on the planet, and then you're looking at predicates. So things which are true or false about people on the planet, like have red hair or something like that. And so the, the things for which the, the people for whom the predicate is true um, will form a subset of the set of terms. So you can think of the uh, predicates on some set uh, just being a, equivalent to a subset, they, i.e. the subset of things for which the predicate is true. So that's um, what you might study as a logician. Um, and if you're an analyst, uh, in analysis, you might be interested in things like metric spaces, so that actually be a metric space, and you associate to that something like the Lipschitz functions, so L of X, so this is Lipschitz, Functions. So this is just functions uh, from, let's say, x to r, which, this has got a metric on it, which don't increase the distance. So, so two points distance uh, m apart are sent to things, points in r, which are at most distance m apart. Okay. Um, I won't go into quite why, in what sense these are, we, these are categories that sort of uses um, I need to go into a bit of an enriched category theory to explain that fully, but the ideas that I'm about to mention sort of work equally well in that setting, which is the beauty of an enriched category theory. So here we're just associated to a point, uh, to just a single object X a category. So the question then arises, uh, what happens if we have a morphism? So if we have um, a morphism, let's say from X to Y, How is that going to relate to the category associated to X and the category associated to Y? Well, the, the wonderful thing is, is that you get lots of functors uh, in these different situations. So if we have a group and we have uh, a group homomorphism to another group, then we get various functors. Um, is that called X? Uh, we get various functors such as in, uh, induction, co-induction, and restriction. Um, if we're in algebra topology, if we've got a map between spaces, we get pullback uh, from bundles on Y to bundles on X. If we're doing algebraic geometry, 
but morphism of, of, she, of varieties or schemes, then we get various push forwards and pullbacks between the, the categories of sheaves. Similarly, in, in logic, we get uh, certain existential quantifiers which come in the same fashion. And in metric spaces, uh, we get various maps as well. So what happens is that associated to that, we get sort of a, a bundle of things. So between C of X and C of Y, we often get uh, sort of a map going backwards, F star, the pullback. And often, we're going to get a monoidal structure on these categories. And often, that one is actually a monoidal one. But, uh, won't go into that. but we also get uh, various push forwards. So we'll, we'll get some adjunct, something which is going to be adjoint to F of a star. So we'll get some, in many situations, we get uh, from a simple morphism, from a single morphism, we get an adjunction between the associated categories. Uh, and we often, so that will be right adjoint to the pullback. So in some situations, we also get a left adjoint. Oops. We also we get two different types of, of things going in the other direction to the pullback. So we would get uh, an adjoint as well. And this is sort of the start of, of, of the story of Grundig's uh, six operations. So we have various functors, not necessarily satisfying exactly this, but of, of this sort of nature. And we also have things like a tensor product on this category, so that's often monoidal, and we have an, uh, an internal HOM on these categories. And the way these functors all interact is a rather beautiful theory. Um, and you get things like projection formula, which is sometimes uh, called Frobenius reciprocity in the context of representation theory. There's various names in, in uh, other, these other bits of maths, but it comes down to the same category theory. That's a beautiful thing. Uh, and things like Beck, Chevalet, as it's called by the logicians, it's called uh, base, change formula, uh, base change theorem by the algebraic geometers. So just by looking at this, this kind of situation, we get lots of similar mathematics in, in these um, very different areas. Um, so I'm just going to give you, in the next few lectures, I'm just going to give you some very uh, some very basic example. I'm going to look at bundles over sets, so no topology, no algebraic geometry. Just the very uh, sort of most simple version of this, and I'm going to sort of describe how to, how to construct these functors. Okay. So that's the motivation.